This video is going to focus on some of the other features of conic sections uh, besides just how to graph them. So far we've graphed all four conic sections and we've talked about the um, focal points of um, ellipses and hyperbolas. We're going to talk about some other features in this one. This first slide is not really something you need to know how to do. It's just something that you should see while you're discussing conic sections. We kind of have a good way to, to draw an ellipse. Um, if you take a string and tack the ends down and keep it tight and move the pencil around, you can kind of make a pseudo compass out of a string that really illustrates that the sum of distances is the same between any two points. Um, if we take two sets of concentric circles, so the yellow and the blue are both going to be our focal points. And the concentric circles just represent distances from each dot. Um, you know, our definition of a circle is all points equidistant from a dot. So this is a bunch of different circles centered at each one. So now let's, um, let's draw an ellipse using these circles quickly. If you, let's make that sum of distances be 15. So I'll start right here. This point is 3 from yellow and it's 12 from blue, which means it's sum of distances from each point is 15. Now, if you keep that 15 constant, it's going to move around like this. I kind of go diagonally across these somewhat diamond-shaped things. Um, I almost called them quadrilaterals, but they don't have straight sides. But you know what I mean, diagonal. I'm going from here to here across this thing diagonally. Um, so if you follow that pattern, you're going to keep a constant sum of differences at 15. Um, for instance, this, this particular dot right here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from blue, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from yellow, which means its sum of distances is still 15. So if you look at all of those pink dots together, you've created an ellipse where the focal points, foci, foci, however you want to say it, those are all 15 units away when you add the distances from yellow and blue. But like I said, we already had a string drawing trick for doing that. Let's talk about hyperbola, because there's no little string trick for drawing that. Let's connect all points whose difference in distances from the two spots is one, or excuse me, is um, eight. Here's a dot. It is, excuse me, one more time, it's seven. This is one from yellow, it's eight from blue, and eight minus one is seven. If we want to keep that the same, if I move one more away from yellow, I need to move one more away from blue. And that's going to take me to a place like right here, or right here. All right, that's two from yellow, it's nine from blue, difference of seven. Kind of go diagonally again and see what's traced out. I've never had a great demo of drawing a hyperbola, but this is going to be about as good as we can get using these concentric circles. So these are all green points whose difference in distances measured from yellow and blue is a constant um, one unit, excuse me, seven units. So there's the green hyperbola. So that's not something you're going to have to recreate or make. I just wanted you to see that. You need to look at this picture while you're studying hyperbolas. Okay, so let's move on. Next topic. Eccentricity, eccentricity. Um, I'm not sure which one's the best, but I'll just use both. Eccentricity is how much a conic section deviates from being circular. That's not an official definition. There's a... Um, a more complicated definition, but this is how we should think of it at this point. The more circular it is, the lower the eccentricity. That's why the circles is zero. A parabola is one. A parabola, think of it like this. We have a circle, and a circle is kind of like an ellipse where the focal points are the same point. If you move that second focal point further away, you get more and more of a squished ellipse. If that second focal point moved infinity away, all the way out to the right, which isn't really something that's possible in the real world, but the more the more you advance in math, the more you're going to talk about stuff that happens at infinity. It 
switches from being an ellipse into a parabola. At that point, the eccentricity is equal to one. If you go beyond one, then it's a hyperbola. Now, these formulas, your poor old math teacher had to make this video a couple times because these formulas were confusing at first. The B's and A's, which one is which? With an ellipse, it's one minus B squared over A squared. Now, A is a semi-major axis, B is a semi-minor axis. This one I was all good on. Semi-major, in this case, semi-major, the major axis goes through the focal points. If this is an ellipse that's stretched out tall, then its focal points are going to be somewhere like here and here. And the longer of the two is the major axis. The shorter of the two is the minor axis. That's going to be different for a hyperbola, which is what I messed up on the last time I made this beautiful video. So for this particular ellipse, the eccentricity E is equal to the square root of 1 minus b squared over a squared. All you need to know for an ellipse is that b squared is the smaller of the two. This is b squared, this is a squared. All right, so I need to do 1 minus 20 over 25. And notice, our, if we had written it like this um, and included that into the parentheses and we had the square root of 20 on the bottom, then we would have um, to square it to get back to 20. But if it's written in this form where it's just a 20, you're just going to use the 20 and use the 25. So anyway, the eccentricity, eccentricity is the square root of 1 minus 20 twenty fifths. If you think of 1 as 25 twenty fifths and subtract 20 twenty fifths to get this, which is equal to the square root of 5 over 5. Or you can list it as a decimal. So eccentricity of an ellipse, square root of 1 minus the smaller number over the bigger number. Here's what I learned today. For a hyperbola, square root of 1 plus b squared over a squared. In a hyperbola, it's not always that b is the smaller number. b is the 1. The, the major axis goes through the focal points. Look at this um, particular hyperbola. The focal points are going to be inside the curves, which means that the semi-major axis goes through goes the major axis goes through the focal points the semi-major axis is the distance from the center to the vertex so in this case it's the two whichever here's how you can remember it whichever one of these two numbers the four and the nine is the positive one the direction of the opening opening is vertical the y is my positive clump the x is my negative clump so that means i need to put the semi-major on top, which is the, excuse me, semi-minor on top, because B is semi-minor, and here's B squared. So semi-minor in this case is 9, semi-major is 4. All right, so whichever one is the positive clump, put that on the bottom. All right, so this one is, let's see, 4 fourths plus 9 fourths is 13 fourths or the square root of 13 over 2. That A and B thing, um, I've not taught eccentricity before, so I was reading up on it and learning that. I always, when, with an ellipse, I thought, okay, here's our pattern. We're going to make uh, we're gonna make B the smaller number. But in this case, with this hyperbola, B is not the smaller number. A is the one that goes through the vertex. So keep that in mind. We'll practice that some to make sure you got it, but that can be a little tricky, so don't make the same mistake I did. All right, last thing, focus in directorates. The definition of a parabola, all points equidistance from a point and a line. So it looks something like this. Distance from the point to the line is the same. And if you do all such points, you create a parabola. That point's called the focus. That line is called the directrix. So what I would love to know is if I have a parabola such as this one, 
what are the focus and the directrix? Let's start by putting this thing into vertex form. This is a good review. To put it in vertex form, we complete the square. We take half of the two, make it a one, uh, square it and get one. So I need a plus one here and a minus one to make up for it. So this parabola in vertex form is x plus one quantity squared minus two. And forgive me, allow me to do this for what's coming next. Let me put a one right there. Sometimes there's a number there that we had to factor out before completing the square. Not this time, but that's okay. Here is the focus. To find the focus, we're going to find this distance right here, P. P is the distance from focus to vertex, which is also the distance from vertex to directrix. P is equal to 1 over 4A. This is A. All right, our, form, our vertex form is A times X minus H squared plus K. So whatever I have there, which in this case is a 1, goes right there. So 4 times 1 is 4. So 1 fourth. The distance between my focus and my vertex is 1 fourth. So my, my focus is way down. It's probably a little too high. It's only one-fourth above the um, vertex. So what are the coordinates? If the vertex is negative one, negative two, the focus is one-quarter of a unit above that. So negative one, negative one and three-fourths, or negative seven-fourths. Right? This one doesn't have much distance in between. Whatever that, se that little distance is, we go down that much to get to, to the director. So this is the focus. The directrix is going to be a horizontal line that goes right here, which is y equals, how far down is that? The vertex was two down. We need to go another quarter down. Um, so that's one, or that's two and a quarter or negative nine quarters. So this formula is the key to finding the distance P, which is right here, and that will help you, using the vertex, find the focus and the directrix. All right, so for the last time I've made this video, hopefully, we've got our visual of the hyperbola, pretty neat. We've got our eccentricity, eccentricity. Careful on this A and B right here. It's not that B is the smaller number always like it is on the ellipse. It's that A is the distance that goes towards your focal points. And then we've got our focus and directrix. All right, so for the last time, Hoven out.